Hey everybody, it is Friday night and tonight we are going to discuss my testing of my aquarium and what I test for, when, why, so on and so forth. So first of all, I'm going to say everybody should have at least the basics when it comes to a test kit. You should have the ability to test for ammonia. You should have the ability to test for nitrites and nitrates, and that will give you the ability to test your nitrogen cycle. So, for example, if you're starting up a new tank, you'll be able to test every parameter you need to test all the way through the nitrogen cycle until the tank is cycled in and ready for fish to go in it. Those are the basics. You also should be able to test your tank for pH. I usually recommend to people to get a total dissolved solids meter that's not really necessary but they don't cost that much money um, I don't know I'll put a link to one of the ones I've bought over the years I don't remember which one I specifically have but I'll put a link down below to a couple of the different tests and test kits and stuff that I've gotten that I've used uh, I have tests for all sorts of things I've got the total dissolved solid meter I've got pH meters um, I can test for silicates, I can test for phosphates, I've got an electrical conductivity meter so I can actually test the electrical conductivity of the water, and so on and so forth. Most of that stuff I don't use at all. The phosphate test, for example, I got simply because I was doing some experimentation early on in my fish keeping, and I wanted to find out about phosphates in my tank, and I wanted to find out the correlation between phosphates and nitrates and so on and so forth, and I wound up buying a phosphate test kit, and I used it for those experiments and did what I wanted to do, and I've never used that phosphate test kit since. But... I can test for phosphates if I need to. Uh, I've also tested for silicates. Again, just curious. Wanted to learn about my tanks. Wanted to learn about silicates in my tanks. I was struggling with the brown diatom algae. I wanted to find out if I had unusually high levels of silicates in my tank. Uh, it's typically people with um, reef tanks or marine tanks that worry about getting silicate tests, but I did, and I tested my water and my groundwater and my tap water and so on and so forth, and I did all that stuff, and I've never used that silicate test since. So, most of that stuff you really don't need, but your basic freshwater master test kit is a good idea to have. Everybody should have the capacity to test for your basic nitrogen cycle and your water's pH. The pH is really important and then of course again being able to test for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate is really important as well. So I don't test all the time for everything. Every time I do a water change I'm not in here testing for ammonia. There's no need to test for ammonia. Why am I going to just, you know, I'm just going to go through and waste all of my tests. That's, you know, you got to replace that stuff. It costs money. So if I have no reason to suspect that I've got ammonia in the tank, I don't test for ammonia. I don't check my nitrates every time I do a water change because the nitrates aren't really that important. And if I'm in here doing a water change, well, I'm doing a water change. So what is finding out what the nitrates are going to tell me, you know? So, occasionally I'll test for nitrates randomly, and you can think of that as sort of like a random quality control. I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on in my tanks. I will say that when I was newer, and my tanks were newer, and I had less experience, and I was less familiar with my feeding routine, and my bio loads, and so on and so forth, I tested a lot more often. And over time, I became a lot more familiar with what to expect in my tanks. I know when I get in this tank, if I've done a water change and it's been a few weeks, I'm probably going to have 60 to 80 parts per million in my nitrates or something like that. And that's normal and fine. There's no reason for me to go in there and check my nitrates every time I do a water test. But from time to time, I will just so I can say, okay, they are about where I expected them to be, and maybe they might not be, and then I can maybe, just by random, stumble upon something going on in a tank. But that's usually not the way it works. Normally, you start testing for things when you see something wrong and when you see a problem. So, 
if I come down in the morning, you know, a lot of people will talk about, you know, I'll find a dead fish or something. Oh, did you test me? No, not really. If I come down in the morning and I find, you know, let's say I got a couple of dead shiners in here. Would I start testing for nitrates and ammonia and all that stuff? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't test for anything. I would just assume I lost a couple of minnows and so what? You know, they got killed by something or they ran into the rock or whatever. That's not the kind of stuff that concerns me, coming down and finding a dead fish or whatever. If I came down and three quarters of the fish in this tank were up near the surface and were swimming around gasping for breath, so to speak, I would, well, first of all, I'd be running for the siphon hose to do a water change. The first thing I would be doing would be looking at that filter to make sure I still got water circulation. And then I'd be doing a water change, and while I was changing the water, I'd be checking immediately for ammonia. And that's because I've got enough experience to know that ammonia toxicity and ammonia poisoning damages the gills. The fish can't get enough oxygen into their blood, and so they behave the same way that they would behave as if the, the water didn't have enough oxygen in it. And they'd start rising towards the surface trying to get more oxygen-rich water. But it could be either because you've got no circulation in your tank, or it could be because of ammonia poisoning. If I looked in there and saw that my filter was flowing, my next guess would be check for ammonia. If I came down and one of my tanks was cloudy all of a sudden, my suspicion for a cloudy tank would be to assume something's out of whack with my nitrogen cycle. And so cloudy tanks usually, don't know why, but a cloudy tank usually indicates that you've got nitrates, I'm sorry, nitrites building up in your tank if you've got something knocked out of whack with your nitrogen cycle. So if I come down and I see a tank that's getting a little bit cloudy, the first thing I do is I grab my nitrite test and I test and it usually comes out at a quarter part per million or something and sure enough, I'm showing signs of a little bit of nitrite buildup. And so if I get in there and really think about what happened, it's just after I did a water change or something happened to my filter and there's a reason. You know, things don't just happen for no reason, so if I've got no reason to test, I don't. I don't just do tests perfunctorily every single time I do a water change. That's just not necessary. You're just wasting money and wasting tests. I will occasionally do random tests of my nitrates just to test my nitrates occasionally just to see where my tanks are sitting and just to see what's going on otherwise unless i've got reason to think something's going wrong i don't do a whole lot of testing now i will throw in in my case because of the nature of my youtube channel here and the videos i shoot and demonstrations i do and little experiments i'm tinkering with i tend to do water testing a little more frequently than is necessary but as far as my maintenance of my tanks goes, you get the point. You get what I'm saying is I don't test all the time for everything and there's just no need to. I don't test if I come down and I see a dead fish in the tank. You know, if I came down in the morning and there was four or five dead fish in the tank, I'd start testing for ammonia and nitrites just to see what's going on. But in all honesty, there's a lot of things that can happen in your tank that can wipe out all your fish that have nothing to do with what your basic water testing is going to do. If you come down and you've got a bunch of dead fish in your tank and it's because of oxygen deprivation, you can test the water all you want and it's going to show no nitrites or no you know, ammonia or whatever and you're going to have a bunch of dead fish. So what is that water testing going to tell you? Um... You know, I've always been kind of puzzled. I've always scratched my head as to why people seem to insist immediately going to test your water when you see a dead fish or something. That's not the kind of thing that causes you to test your water. The, the, the water tests that come with the freshwater master test kit all more or less revolve around your nitrogen cycle. So if you're not having the kind of issue in your tank that is associated with your nitrogen cycle i.e. cloudy water, then, there, you know, testing for ammonia doesn't really tell you a lot, you know? 
So, you know, I don't really know what to tell you other than if you're cycling a tank in, then having the tests are very important to know when the, the tank is ready. You can follow along and make sure everything's moving as it should. And of course, it's important to have a test kit available so if anything does come up you've got the capacity to test your water and see what's going on and find out if anything is wrong but do you need to test your water all the time to make sure nothing's going wrong in your tank no not at all and i don't i was thinking about testing butter beans water here today i haven't actually done a water change on this tank um since about a week after i put him in the tank i put him in i got him all settled up and then I did a water change, and I haven't done a water change since. So him and these guppies are the only fish that are in this tank. And it's a 40-gallon tank. I've got plants in there. I don't do a ton of feeding on this tank. So I'd be interested to see after all this time what the nitrates in this tank are. So that might be a reason why I would do a test. Simply out of curiosity, just to sort of get a feel for this tank. This is a new tank. I'm not used to how long it takes the nitrates to build up, how frequently should I do a water change, you know, how quickly does this tank um, start getting dirty, I'll say, even though I don't really consider the nitrates uh, in the water dirty, necessarily. So that's really about it. That's about all I can think of to say as far as, you know, my thoughts on how and when I do water testing for whatever that was worth. I hope that was helpful to somebody. So I guess to wrap it up, I will say thank you for watching and make sure you're subscribed. Uh, this tank here that we're looking at is my brackish tank with Butterbean, the world famous figure eight puffer. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you real soon on the next one.